Hello YouTube and welcome to my first video. I have had a pre-existing YouTube channel for the past nearly 20 years now and on the whim I've decided to create another YouTube channel um, for backup emergency purposes. Um, I've never seen any um, intention of turning this into a channel of any sort or anticipated that but here i am um i thought well why use my personal youtube account when i could just use my backup which offers a more a slightly more um well affords me slightly more privacy but anyways we're not here to talk about that we are here to speak about this so, this is what is generically called a Stirling engine. But in this particular case, this is called a Manson engine. And these are small display models that take real fuel, i.e. such as alcohol, so you take a tank like this and you fill it with alcohol and it's very clean burning, it's very clean burning fuel, you can, you can burn it indoors. Um, it's in the name of methylated spirits, you can buy that from hardware stores and such. So on a generic front, a Stirling engine is a heat engine that works off the principle of temperature differential. So, for example, when you light your alcohol lamp onto the hot bulb, as you can see there, it takes, there's normally a trapped hot air. Well, that's there, that's the next name of them. They're called hot air engines because you have a fixed quantity of air in these engines, or specifically stony ones. Um, you take, it takes the working fluid, which is hot air, and, it, and the lamp heats the air in the hot bulb. The moving displacer that's linked to the crankshaft shifts that hot air to the cold side where you would normally see another working piston. This is a bad example, so I'm gonna show you one that I do have. It's not really in working order, but this demonstrates the um, principle better. Now here is normally a glass bulb. The working fluid is air that's fixed inside. It's what's called a closed system. And the hot lamp heats the hot air. This displacer, when it shifts, shifts that hot air towards the second piston, which is known as the power piston. And <clears throat> when the air cools down on the cold center, it then contracts, thus pulling the power piston back upwards. So that's your power stroke, thus shifting the cold air back to the hot displacer where the cycle repeats itself. So as the machine is reciprocating, the, work, the hot working fluid that keeps the engine spinning is shifting along back and forth, back and forth, back and forth at very high speeds and it's a what's known as a closed closed system so the heat itself isn't the working fluid to drive the engines the heat is just simply providing the temperature the temperature difference you know to make it work but i've had this for about a few years um all my other engines are in various states of <laughs> repair so they do need um, care and attention as when you're using them but they make wonderful desk toys and I like moving mechanical things like as you can see I've got a collection um, I have a V twin cylinder vacuum engine that needs new parts these two are known as Webster engines um, those are real working petrol engines and that's another um, flame liquor. You can get these three 
off from engine DR wiring two. I received this one the other the other week. That's a fantastic one that I'm going to review on another video. But we're not here to talk about this. We're here to talk about this that Engine DIY has sent me for review. Now the links to purchase this is down below in the description. I will leave a link where you can get a 10% discount. Now this is what's known as a Manson engine. And as you can see, it's much more mechanically simpler than your equivalent Stirling engine. All you have is one displacer that shifts the heat. And a Manson engine, you could look at it as like an open system form of the Stirling engine. So instead, instead of it using a fixed amount of air that's closed inside the system, this is what's more known as a atmospheric engine. So it works off a similar principle of the Stirling engine, but instead you're taking the temperature differential from the hot bulb to the outside atmosphere. So the hot bulb would, would be the hot plate and the outer atmosphere would be the cold um, exchange, basically. So this engine is more connected to the outside atmosphere when it works. So the working fluid is the atmosphere. So there should be a small hole somewhere located. You might not be able to see it. It's probably in the cylinder. There's probably a small little hole that lets in and lets out hot and cold air to the hot bulb. Now this particular design was illustrated in a 1952 um, engine, you know, a model, modeling engine article from the 50s. So this is a much more modern design which follows an old principle. So this model design is basically from the 50s. It's not as popular as the Stirling engine, but it is known to be less efficient. But for desk models, it's just another interesting curiosity. Okay, so it comes with an alcohol bottle. I think that's the fill bottle. There's your adding key inside it. It also comes with an instruction manual that's, so far I'm seeing that's in, it's in Chinese. So let me try and get that open if I can mount this phone correctly. Okay. Okay, so that's the instruction manual. No, it's entirely in Chinese. But due to the simplicity of these machines, at least specifically with this one, don't really need an instruction manual. But I think from what I'm starting to notice, I don't really think mine has come with the alcohol lamp, unfortunately, from what I'm seeing. Yeah, let me pause that. <laughs> Hello again. Um, my absolute mistake. Um, I just haven't looked in the box. <laughs> so it does come with a alcohol bottle. Um, I probably would have had to have borrowed another one from another engine. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's get this out the bag and then we shall see how it looks. Well, I finally got the alcohol into the bottle. Uh, I'm sorry for not sh um, showing you how I've done that, but as you can see, it takes normal methylated spirits. So this is alcohol with a 95%
content of ethanol so that's your normal drinking alcohol but don't drink this stuff it's it's been in it's been contaminated with intoxicants so you know to make it duty free to stop you know would be drinkers from pick you know having a cheap drink in it so <laughs> so <clears throat> the engine has come with this squeegee bottle as you can see it's got a small little needle um, a medical needle um, you just ins insert it into the bottle give it a squeeze it should siphon into the bottle squirt it into the alcohol lamp get that wick through that metal hole and we are ready to go this is literally like its first time running so i'm not really sure how it's going to perform but hopefully it flies like the wind now if we look very carefully it's shaped as a gun it's like a gun shape, which is humorous for me because I'm trying to build a small engine collection and as you can see, um, I'm trying to aim for that period military sort of a theme with my collection. So it's quite interesting that it's shaped as a gun with a rotating mass. But another advantage to Manson engines before we get this going is that you can spin in, in either direction. They can rotate in either direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise. A Stirling engine can only really normally rotate in one direction because it's angled at 90 degrees. It must work with the thermodynamic principle. So Stirling engines are more con constrained in terms of their design. But with this, you can rotate them in any direction. Okay, let's get this thing going. Okay, as you can see, it's a small blue flame. Just gotta wait for that to warm up. So if you just give it a gentle flick, it should kick to life. So it requires a little time to get going. I'll just adjust that properly. Let's get them there. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so as you can see. It's finally kicking to life. Now what I normally do with my engines before running them, well, specifically with these hot air engines, such as your Stirling engines, vacuum engines, which I'm gonna talk about in another video, I insert them with what's called a dry lubricant, such as graphite. And the reason why these engines require dry lubricant such as graphite is because if you were to use regular machine oil or, or of some sort with these machines they will stop running they do not output a lot of power they do not tolerate machine oil perhaps some of them i say when i say some of these engines i more mean these vacuum engines i.e the flame liquors some of them may accept oil but when it comes to sterling engines dry graphite is what you need to lubricate these machines as of when they're required otherwise they will seize up and stop working as you can see it's funny that's a very
this one looks a very calm rate. Don't know if calm is the right word. <laughs> It's a very laid back machine, this one. Now these machines run at various speeds. Some of them run very fast at in excess of 2000 RPM. Others run at 1000 RPM. And this one runs at a more calmer, definitely underneath 1000. It's definitely a machine. That could calm your stresses if you're... So say if you're coming home late from work and you're very stressed out. This is like having a candle on your coffee table. Or having a stress ball. <laughs> And I've always found it especially fascinating how you can get the real principle of a real working engine scaled down into such a small form. Now, would I say it can serve a practical purpose? Perhaps not, as as you can see, you can stop it with your finger. So it's not really gonna power much besides it powering itself being a decorative item, but that's exactly what, what I want from it. A decorative item <laughs> to join the rest of the collection. So, I hope, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, the links to purchase this product is down on the description down below. Get your 10% discount off this engine. It's a fantastic runner that can sit alongside all the others. And I'll be having many hours of fun with this. Again, a big thumbs up to Engine DIY for sending me sending me this in for review. I absolutely love these machines. Um, if you haven't got the space to marvel what a real a mechanical engine in Marvel, let's spell that out. If you don't have the room to marvel like a real mechanical marvel such as a combustion engine, then these are the next best things to have. Okay, thank you very much.